Happy Independence Day, Real Life family and friends. We are so glad that you are joining us on this 4th of July. Not only is it the 4th of July, but it's also Communion Sunday. And every first Sunday of the month, we come together to the Lord's table and we celebrate and remember and rejoice Jesus' complete and ultimate sacrifice for us in his death and burial and resurrection. So I want to ask, would you go to your cupboard or to your fridge, take some juice, take some bread, and hold that until we all receive communion together. Now, would you join us for a time of worship as we worship the Lord together? This is from earlier in the year, uh, our time of worship, but it was a powerful time. And so would you join us for worship in the Word today? Happy Fourth of July. Good morning, Real Life at Home. We are so glad you are worshiping the Lord with us today. It is Communion Sunday, so I want to ask while we are getting started worshiping the Lord, would you go find some communion elements there at your home so you can receive as we come to the table of the Lord in just a little while? Well, let's all stand where you're at if you'd like to sit where you're at, kneel where you're at. Let's all come before His presence with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise as Jason leads us. Amen. Amen. All right, Real Life Church. We go. One, two, three, four. Tell me who I am I know who I am Because he 
declared those words, all that I must decrease so that you may increase. God, that people would see Jesus in our lives. That is our heart's cry today, Lord. This morning, I want to invite you where you're at. If you have a cracker or a roll or a piece of bread, whatever you may have, we would begin to share that with one another. And as we prepare to receive communion, I want you to think about the perspective shift a little bit. Because we often talk in communion, which is, is representative of the greatest gift you and I have ever been given. But I look around that table on that night when Jesus was with his twelve. And I think of their everything that they were thinking of in those moments. As they're sitting there with the Savior, not even realizing that it was their last meal together, except for maybe one who knew what was coming. And as they were sitting there, I think of Judas with sweat possibly on his brow. And the angst inside, I don't think it was an easy thing for him to betray Jesus. I think there was anxiety and all of these things happening. And then I think of Peter who's so ferocious in his love for Christ. But yet Jesus is telling him, what his evening would like look like further and he becomes angry and he's like no way and each of them sitting there had things in their lives but they were invited by the savior to sit and to hear what was possibly the greatest sermon ever preached because it was from the heart of the savior the heart of mankind and he said for everything that you're feeling and everything that you're facing in this moment I'm laying down my life for that for you to have freedom and for you to have wholeness and for you to have victory in that moment Jesus said believe me, if you will trust me, I have everything that you've ever needed, that you've ever dreamed, that you've ever desired, and it's about to be fulfilled. The question is, will you receive it? It says in the word, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And he held it before that room full of men and women just like you and I. With our baggage, with our brokenness, with our enthusiasm, with our gentle spirits, with anxiety, with fear. And he said, this is my body broken for you. you, exactly you. He said, would you eat it and receive it? Would you receive the freedom that comes with that of knowing that this is my gift to you? And then they broke the bread and they received it. And then he took the cup and he looked at that chaotic creation of people that was sitting around the table and he said this is my blood that's poured out for you remember remember this moment and I want to encourage you at home remember this moment Jesus' blood is poured out as a gift freely given for our salvation from everything from everything See, it's the salvation from our sins, the salvation from the things that that we worship or exalt higher than his name. It's salvation from the things of this world that keep us held down. It's salvation from ourselves. It is life everlasting. 
the promise and the hope of salvation and eternity with Jesus the Savior, the Messiah himself. This is his blood. And it was poured out for you and it was poured out for me. And as you receive that together this morning, would you remember that as you eat and as you drink, would you invite more of him? Would you invite invite more of him in so that he would increase and we would decrease? Jesus, would you bless this cup? Would you bless this bread today? And you would you receive our worship as we worship you and remember and as we sing these words of surrender to you. In Jesus' name, please receive there in your homes.
Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watch, were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting. That star spangled Once again, family and friends, we are so glad that you are worshiping the Lord with us today on this 4th of July on Independence Day. You know, Independence Day is the day that we celebrate our independence from tyranny, our independence, and became our own nation, July 4th, 1776. But as something that is critical and important to us and at the core foundation of who we are as Americans... As believers in Jesus Christ, there's something even more core and even more critical, and that is our dependence upon God. I want to take a few minutes and talk with you about that today. So if you got your Bible, I want to invite you to turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 73. Psalm chapter 73 is where we're going to be reading today. Psalm chapter 73, we'll have it up on the screen for you, just in case you don't have a Bible. But if you do have a Bible, grab it, because you're going to want to underline this passage, highlight it, and go back to it many times. So let's read this together. A stand for the reading of God's word and read aloud with me. Would you please? Ready, set, go. Who do I have in heaven but you? And I desire nothing on earth but you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we thank you. That is, we celebrate our independence and our freedom as Americans today. Lord, today we, as believers in Jesus Christ, celebrate our dependence upon you. Lord, I pray as we take some time to get into your word today, I pray that you would change us, that you would transform us, that you would not just inspire us, but that you would transform us. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, and we say thank you for your continued work in us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. So I'd like to take a few minutes and talk to us about our dependence upon God, because we Americans, we like to talk a lot about independence and freedom and speaking our truth and things that make us who we are as individuals. There's many people in our country that make up our nation. And there's many people in the body of Christ that make us the church. But today I want to talk to us about our dependence on God. 
Because there's many people in the world who think that they're independent. They can do their own thing. We've got it all figured out. I'm going to do things my way, like old Blue Eyes used to sing. I did it my way. I don't want to do things my way. I want to do things his way. Because my way, the Word of God says, leads to death. But his way, Jesus' way, leads to life. So let's take a look at this passage again. Psalm chapter 73, verses 25 and 26. Who do I have in heaven but you? And I desire nothing on earth but you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. The psalmist, as he's writing this passage, there's a couple of significant questions that are asked and answered right here in the book of Psalms, chapter 73. The first question is this, who do I have in heaven but you? At some point, our life will be over. At some point, our life will end. All of us at different times. But the psalmist is writing and he's asking this question. He says, who do I have in heaven but you? The only way to get to heaven is by making Jesus the Lord of your life. And once you've done that, once you discover, once you realize that, that you need salvation, everything changes. Life gets better. It doesn't get perfect. It just gets better because Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So in this Psalm, we see who do I have in heaven, but you, the only one who's able to redeem us is the one who sent his son. We've become the word of God tells us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we Americans, we like to tend to think that we've got it all figured out. We can do our own thing, especially those of us who live in New Hampshire, right? Live free or die. That's the way to do it. Well, Yeah, that's a great independent thought to have. Many of us live our lives that way. But when you discover that we're completely dependent upon God for his blessing, for his life, for the joy that we have, for the freedom that we celebrate, for the country that we are privileged to live in, that is when we realize we are completely and totally 100% dependent upon God. Upon what not just what God can do for us, but who He is to us. Jesus is our Savior. Here at at, at Real Life Church, we know that Jesus is a Savior. He's a baptizer with the Holy Spirit. He's our healer, and He's our soon coming King. The four foundational truths of the Four Square Church. That's what that is. And it states that we are completely dependent upon God and upon the work that Jesus completed on the cross, and then when He rose again from the grave for you and for me. We are completely dependent upon God. And so the question is asked in Psalm chapter 73. Who do I have in heaven? There's nobody else in heaven but you. You are the one who is in my corner. Everybody is cheering us on in heaven, those who have gone before us. But the only one who is able to save and to redeem us is God. The only one who is able to save and to redeem us is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Who do I have in heaven but you? So here's what's interesting. In verse 25 and 26, these two verses dovetail together so beautifully. Look at this. The beginning of verse 25 is the question. Who do I have in heaven but you? And then the remainder of of, the second half of verse 26 says this. It says, God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. Who do I have in heaven? And the answer is God. God, who is the strength of my heart. See, we live in a world where there's a lot of things going on, don't we? There's a lot of heartache that can happen. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of trial. I know many of us are excited to celebrate because last 4th of July was a whole lot different. Last year was a whole lot different than every sing- any single one of us have ever experienced with a global pandemic. Last year, I pray and I hope that we discovered that we need to be completely dependent, on, dependent upon God. God is the one who saves. God is the one who redeems. God is the one who delivers. If you hear nothing else today, I want you to hear that. Who do I have in heaven but you? Verse 26, God is the strength of my heart. Because sometimes our hearts fail. Sometimes our hearts get weak. Sometimes our hearts just want to say, you know what, I quit. This is too hard. This is too challenging. This is too rough. This is too hard. And when we realize this passage that we're completely dependent on God, in our independence, we are completely dependent upon God because he is the strength of my heart. The word of God tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
It's not the joy of Tim is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the word of God tells us that his strength is made perfect or it's made complete when we are weak. You may be hearing the sound of my voice today and you might be saying, you know, Pastor Tim, I do feel pretty weak. I do feel pretty hurt. I do feel pretty disillusioned. Things haven't turned out the way that I thought that they would turn out. Who do I have in heaven but God? Because he is the strength of my heart. He's my portion forever. Now, what does that mean? He's my portion. The word of God is telling us that he's our portion. He is the one who satisfies. There's nothing else that satisfies. There's a portion of our life that every single one of us are born with that is empty. And God is the only portion that can fill that emptiness in our heart. He's the only one who can fill that portion in our life. He is the strength of my heart and my portion, the one who fills me forever. Jesus even goes on to say in John chapter 4, he meets the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. And, she's, and he says, can you give me a drink? And she says, okay, well, this well, you know, and everything, and you know, it's, it's, it's built here and so on and so forth. And, and he says, if you realized who was talking to you, the water that I give you to drink, you'd never thirst again. You'd never hunger again because Jesus is the portion that every single human being needs. God is the only one we have. Jesus, his son, is the only one we have in heaven who is the portion that can fill that place in our hearts, not just for a day, not just for a week, not just for a couple of years, but forever. He is our portion, our strength of my heart and my portion forever. Now, I want to take a look at this second part of verse 25 because a second part of verse 25 and the first part of verse 26. So you see what we're doing here. So we got this section and this section and this section and this section and they both go together beautifully. Look at this. The second part of verse 25 says, and I desire nothing on earth but you. And then the first part of 26 says this, my flesh and my heart may fail. There's nothing on earth I desire more than you. See, God is not only in heaven, our Father which art in heaven, but God is everywhere. He's omnipresent. There's the big theological word for the day. God is everywhere at once. He sees everything going on. How does that work? I don't really know, but I know that we're going to have an eternity to discover it and figure that out in that place that he's preparing for us. And so the word tells us, and I desire nothing on earth but you. There are a lot of things on earth that many of us would like to have, that we'd like to possess, that we'd like to own, that we'd like to have, have ownership of, right? Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a place to live. Maybe it's an apartment. Maybe it's a home. Maybe it's a reliable car. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's financial security. Whatever it might be, there's a whole lot of things that we as Americans who live, in, who live in the land of the free and the home of the brave, that they say, if we just do the American way, if, we can, we, if, if, if you dream it, you can do it. Well, yeah, but the word tells us there's nothing on earth, and I desire nothing on earth but you. See, the word of God tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything that is in the earth is the Lord's. And there's nothing that I desire more than him. That's what Matthew chapter 6 tells us. It says, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and everything that you have need of will be given to you. Wow. See, we're talking about our complete dependence upon God today on July the 4th. 2021. And I desire nothing on earth but you. Why? Because my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Things are going to come and go. Money comes and goes. Health comes and goes. Sickness comes and goes. God remains the same. We see it on the wall back behind us. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He never fails. And today, as we're claiming 
saying, Lord, I am completely and totally 100% dependent upon you. I want to encourage you today. Would you call out to God? As you draw to a conclusion, would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Lord, I thank you that we can celebrate independence as Americans. Thank you, Lord, that you have privileged us to live in this amazing, wonderful country. But Lord, in that, we know there's nothing that can fill. There may be temporary fulfillment in life without you. But Lord, there's that place in every single one of our hearts that needed to be filled with that portion, that key that only fits like you intended it to because you created us to be a people who are dependent upon you. You may be hearing the sound of my voice today. Maybe you're saying, you know, Pastor Tim, I, wanna, I, I want that in my life. I need God in my life. I'm tired of my life being what it's been. <clears throat> Would you just say this simple prayer with me? Would you just say, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name and I give you my life. Right now, I, give, I confess my sins, all of my past, all my successes and failures. I give it all to you. I lay it at your feet, Jesus. Right now, I ask you to forgive me and I receive your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, baptize me with your power. Fill me to overflowing. I realize and recognize I am completely dependent upon you. So save me. Fill me. Lead me. Guide me. And I will live the rest of my life for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, if you just prayed that prayer, great news. You just made the best decision ever. You just made Jesus Lord of your life on the 4th of July. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. At the bottom of the screen, there's an email address, info at reallifenh.org. Would you please drop us a note? Let us know. Pastor Tim, I just prayed that prayer. We want to get you connected with people who can help you pray and get going on your walk with the Lord and discover what real dependence on God looks like. Because I'll tell you what, being, the, being a Christian is the best life ever. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. I hope you have a wonderful day. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. back at our church facility at 22 Pleasant Street in downtown Laconia. Now, would you stretch your hands this way and receive this blessing? Now, Lord, I thank you for everyone who has heard the sound of this message today. I thank you for the hope that you bring. I thank you, Lord, not, from, not for independence from you, but our complete dependence upon you. Thank you that you never leave, you never fail. You're always with us. Now, Lord, as we go today, I pray, Lord God, that you would declare your grace to us this week. Open doors of opportunity for us to share your love and your light. Lord, and as we do that, I pray this over every person hearing this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. May he make you the head and not the tail above and not beneath. May you be blessed and not cursed. And may whatever you set your hands to prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive that, God bless you. I hope you have a great week, everybody. We'll see you real soon. Bye now. 